Welcome back guys. So in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to make these super awesome trees out of, you guessed it, fence pickets. One of my very first videos, I'm actually using old doors to make trees similar to this. People love them and I sold those things like crazy. The problem was I got tons and tons of comments from people saying I can't find old doors or if they did, they're way too expensive. So I decided to create a workaround where we could come up with an awesome end product like this for a super cheap cost. So for the large trees like this white one, you can actually get two trees out of five fence pickets and one two by four. And for these super cool little smaller trees, you can get four trees out of four fence pickets. And just an FYI, years ago, whenever I made these out of old doors, I sold me the large ones for $125 a piece and the small ones for $50 a piece. And I had a waiting list. I could not make these fast enough. I could not find enough old doors. But with something like this, the material is super easy to find and the end product is awesome. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how easy it is to make both the tall and the short trees. And so you know just how easy these things are to build, the tree with the black trim, I made every single one of my cuts only using a circular saw. So this is a channel of no excuses. So let's dive into this video so you can learn how to make these things and get to work. The only style of tree that I will not be teaching you how to make in this video is the tree where the boards are at a 45 degree angle. And all the reason for that is I came up with the idea after I'd already recorded the footage, but I will be teaching you step-by-step step the other two styles. And as always, if you are a plans in the hand type of person, head over to my Etsy shop. I'll throw a link in the description and I'll have plans for all of these trees, including the tree with the angled boards. Okay, so for this first design, we'll be using five fence pickets. First, I'll be throwing on my new RZM3. If you're interested in the most comfortable mask that I've ever worn, I'll make sure to throw a link in the description. So the first thing that I'm gonna do with my pickets is take a quarter of an inch of material off of one side. I'll then set my table saw to five inches and then take the remaining material off of the opposite side. Once we have those fuzzy edges off, we'll head over to the miter saw. Okay, so at the miter saw, I'm just gonna start off by squaring up the ends without the dog ears. Once those ends are flush, I'll be cutting each board to 70 inches. So now that we have all of our boards laid out, we need to square up one of these ends. And I like to do this by using a workbench. I can line one edge up with the side of my workbench and then make sure that it's flush with the end. Then I line the rest of my boards to that one. And just to help to keep everything in line, once I get it square, I'm gonna throw a couple of clamps on the edges. That way the material does not move while I'm laying out my design. So the first thing that I'll do in order to get my shape is to measure in at the top 12 and a half inches. And that mark will represent the tip of the tree. For the next step, you'll be needing a long straight edge. We'll start at the bottom right hand corner and draw a straight line up to the point that we made at 12 and a half inches. Then we'll repeat this for the left side. All right, so for our next step, we are going to be connecting all of these boards. And you can do this a couple of different ways. You could actually glue up all of the edges, clamp this together and make a glue joint. But to keep things simple for this project, I'm just gonna be using pocket holes. So for the pocket hole placement, I'll only be using my second and third boards. I'll start at two inches from the bottom. I'll go to one foot, two foot, three foot, four foot, five foot, then at 68 inches, which would put me two inches from the end. And I'll be drilling these pocket holes on the backs of both sides of each of these boards. So now that we have all of our pocket hole measurements lined out, let's head over to the 720 and drop in some pocket holes. And since this material is right around a half of an inch thick, I like to set my depth collar just a hair below a half of an inch. And I like the collar set like this when working with fence pickets, just in case there's a little low spot in the board, I don't want my screws sticking through. Now that we have all of our pocket holes drilled, let's go ahead and flip over all of our material, re-square and attach using one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. Okay, so now with our screws in, let's go ahead and cut our lines and get this baby put together. This is a tip for making cuts. If you have any one inch or one and a half inch foam insulation laying around, it makes for a perfect cutting surface without having to worry about your parts falling. And there's a couple of different ways that you can make these cuts. You can use a straight edge as a guide like you see me doing here, or if you have a track saw, you can also use that. So after making our two cuts, this is what we end up with. We have one that's already put together in the shape of a tree. And then the two outside pieces that we ripped off, these two pieces here, we'll just flip those around. And we have a second tree with zero waste. The only thing left that you would have to do to these two pieces is join them together. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw in a few pocket holes. All right, so now that we have our two trees assembled, Let's go ahead and start cutting our trim. So for the side and bottom trim for these trees, I'll be using a two by four. I'll start off just by cutting off the rounded edge so I can have a flat surface to work with. And then I will be ripping the two by four down into five eighths strips. Each one of these trees will take a full size strip on each edge and a half of a strip on the bottom. So now that our strips are cut, we need to sand everything down, get these sides stained, whatever color that you would like, and 
put this thing together. And for the sanding, I'm going to be using a disc that you've seen me use for a long time, but I really haven't mentioned much about it. It's actually this funky looking disc with kind of a long name. This is 3M's Cubitron 2 Extract 710W. The only reason why I have not talked about this disc before is because you could only find it in bulk. And who needs a hundred of each grid of disc? But now I've found a place that will sell these in smaller variety packs. The reason why I like this disc is because it lasts longer and it cuts faster. And the reason why is because this wild design keeps the disc cool while the ceramic precision shaped grain does its thing. And like I said, I have found these in smaller variety packs. I'll throw a link in the description in case you're interested. So we're going to start by cutting our two pieces of side trim. We'll be needing two boards that are 74 inches long with a 45 degree cut on one end. And you can pre-stain the material like I did, but you'll have to make a couple of touch-ups. So now with our side trim cut, let's go ahead and attach these to our sides. Now the 45s that I put on both sides, they're going to line up like this at the top of the tree. And to install these, I'll be using wood glue and some brad nails. I'll come in a bit later and add some screws in the side. And once we have our two outside trim boards on, it's time to add the bottom. Now if you've made different sized trees, the easiest way to find this ankle will be to slide the board underneath of your two overhanging sides and then just mark the inside angle. In this case, for these dimensions, they'll be right around nine degrees. Now with the two side angles cut, we'll install this board just like we did the others. After the wood glue dries, it should be plenty to hold all of this together. But just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go ahead and throw in some screws along the side and the bottom. So with that done, let's go ahead and make our stem and our base. And I actually have this eight foot long, one by one and a half inch board left over from our two by four. Let's use it. Okay, so I've taken that one inch leftover strip. I've cut one part of it into a 47 inch length. And this is what I'm gonna call the stem. Okay, so actually it's a trunk, you know, since it's a tree, but whatever, stem, trunk, whatever. And as you can see, I've already stained this to match the sides. But with the rest of that piece, I cut four 12 inch pieces and put a 30 degree angle on one end of each board. Now let's go ahead and put our stand together. So to start out, we'll be attaching two of our legs to our stand. First two will be on opposite sides and I'll be using wood glue and inch and three quarter brad nails. And then to lock everything together, I'm gonna pre-drill and install a two and a half inch screw. And then I'll attach the remaining two legs the same way that I did the first two. Just make sure that if you decided to put a bevel on the end that it's facing the right direction. And this is where we're at. Nice, sturdy, simple tree base. Now let's go ahead and attach it to our tree. First thing that I'm going to do is make sure that my stem is centered with the bottom trim. And then as far as the height of the tree, I'm going to make this one more six and a half feet tall. So to get that height, I'll measure eight inches from the bottom of the tree to the bottom of my stand. So after making sure that everything is good and square, let's go ahead and mark our stand placement. Next, we're going to apply our wood glue and then put our stand back into place. Once that's done, I'll throw in some inch and a quarter brad nails just to hold this into place until I can pre-drill and place my one and a quarter inch screws. For the screw placement, I'll start two inches from the top and then they'll be 10 inches apart. I'll make sure to put one screw that's a bit longer where the stem overlays the bottom trim. This will just add a little bit more support. If you enjoy these types of videos and you think that I have earned a like and subscribe, please do so. That way I can keep this type of content coming your way. So now that we have our first tree done and the inside of our second tree assembled, the only thing that you have to do is repeat the process of putting on the trim and the base. Now let me show you how to make the small trees. Okay, so for the small trees, I'm going to build this just using fence pickets. Now you can use two by four material if you'd like. I'm just gonna show you what they would look like only using pickets. So for the small ones, it's only gonna take three sections of pickets that are 35 inches long and cut five inches wide. Just like before, we'll find our center, then mark our pocket hole spacing. The spacing for the small ones are going to be 2 inches, 9 inches, 18 inches, 28 inches, and 33 inches. I'll install all the pocket holes in the center board, just like I did for the bigger trees. Now, just to show you different tools that you can use, the first tree, I showed you how to do it, just using a typical circular saw. For this one, I'll be using Craig's track saw. Really, it's whatever you have to work with, even if it's just a jigsaw. Once those are cut, I'll install my trim. And since I'm making everything out of fence pickets, I've cut all of my trim pieces down to an inch and a half wide. First, I'll install my two outside pieces of edge trimming. They're 38 inches long. And again, I put 35 degree miters on the end. And then I'll install the bottom board, which is right around 16 and a quarter. Again, for this bottom board, it's best if you measure after you have your two side boards on, because if your cuts are off at all to this point, it's gonna throw that off. And now we'll make the stand for the small one, just like we did for the large one. The only difference is the stem will be 38 inches long and the feet are 10 inches long with a 30 degree bevel. And then to attach the stem to the tree, like we did with the first one, we'll center the stem on the back and then measure down 10 inches from the bottom of the tree to the bottom of the stand. And then we'll install this to the back of the tree, just like we did for the first one, using wood glue, brad nails, and screws. Piece of pine all built out of fence pickets. And just like the large tree, the only thing that you need to do to make a second one is put these two pieces together 
and then finish out the trim work. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed that video. But before we go, I have a huge shout out to one of our Patreon members, Pops Workshop, who created and submitted this awesome build and was chosen as the Patreon member build of the month. This arch planner stand caught my eye as soon as I saw it because it is different. It is unique. And he thought divergently whenever he came up with this. I actually like this build so much that we may be getting together closer to spring to create a how-to video for you guys on building one of these. So make sure to show Pops some support. I'll be throwing a link to his Facebook page as well as his website in the description. We as makers need to support each other and that's what this channel is about. The Patreon community and the Discord channel. It all revolves around supporting each other as makers. Help to work through builds. Ask questions about problems that we may be having with a new build or the marketing side of things or simply bouncing ideas off of like-minded people. And when you put all of that together that is the definition of a community and something that I am proud to be a part of. If you're interested in joining any of those I'll throw the link in the description and if not that's fine too. I'll see you in the next video. But until next time, get up, get out, and build something. See ya.